Hi, welcome to the, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, no, down there, thank you very much. Hi, and welcome to the jib video for second year. Let's learn about this awesome piece of machinery. This is the tutorial video for your second year jib. It's the 10 foot Pro-Aim Wave 2 jib. I know it's a big long name. We just call it the second year jib because it's the only one you can use. This jib is going to be specific for certain cameras only and that's going to be our Blackmagic Pocket Camera as well as our Blackmagic 4.6K Ursa cameras or if you really wanted to we could put the 12K Ursa on there as well. Basically the smaller lighter cameras those are the ones that this jib is going to be designed for okay. So for movies that want to have lots of movement Let's consider uh, these cameras if you wanna have a jib. So there's gonna be a lot of items uh, that are gonna be associated with this. Let's go through that now. Let's take a look at everything you're gonna need if you wanna build the jib properly. So as you can see, we have all the pieces laid out. This is the jib. So everything we need is gonna be inside of this jib with regards to the actual jib. You're gonna get the handle here. You're gonna get your locks for your weights. There's gonna be some extra lock offs and some Allen keys. Everything is in here. In this second bag right here, this is our tripod. So this is where the legs are gonna be for our tripod. But on top of that, our spreader can also be found in here as well. It's also very important how you pack this up just to make everything fit nicely. We've got our weights and we're gonna be using three sandbags for our jib this year because it's a much larger jib and it can go for much higher heights. So we're gonna need some extra weight there to keep everything stable. Awesome, so let's get back to it. First thing we gotta do is we have to get an assistant. I have the best assistant in the business. This is Regan, she's in second year and she's awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of this today. The best. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get the legs out, right? The tripod legs and the spreader, okay? So we're going to open this case up. I had mentioned before that there's a specific way that you can pack this up so that the spreader goes inside, okay? So it just lays nicely inside, right, like this. So what Regan's doing is now extending the spreader halfway. You want to keep the base at least halfway open, and that way it increases the stability of the jib. Now, on the bottom of these legs are two spikes. This is great for you know sticking into soft ground, uh, ice or what have you. But if you're on you know nice solid ground like this, just use the spreader. So these are going to wrap around the feet like so. Would you mind guiding that first one in for me? Excellent. And then lift that lock over. Perfect. Regan's gonna take care of the back one. Now, while that's happening, you're gonna look and say, yeah, Andrew, this isn't gonna fit. It's not gonna work. Look, it, does, it doesn't line up. It's no problem. You do just have to move it over, okay? So you might, you know, you might wanna like have some trepidation and be like, oh, I don't really think I should be moving the legs that way. It's totally fine. There you are. Now. I'm gonna lift up the legs a little bit, just so we can get the jib to a decent height. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sandbag the heck out of this, just to make sure that this tripod leg situation does not uh, tip over. We're gonna be using three sandbags on the jib, one for each leg, and that's because Unlike your first year jib, this one can go up to 10 feet high and it can swing around. It also has a lot of other accessories that we can use with this. Um, and so stability is the name of the game. So now we have this built. We're gonna open up the uh, gym bag thing here. So this is it. The jib is all in one piece. There's no other accessories to worry about. We're gonna put this pouch aside right here for now because we know we're gonna need it and this bar as well. Um, we can extract this jib and put the case away. So the next we get to do is attach this to the tripod legs. And we're gonna do that by uh, loosening and removing the bottom lock. It takes a long time. Now this can move back and forth. So you just wanna keep it kind of level, drop it down. Regan is now locking the jib into place. Done. So we've attached the jib to the legs of the tripod here. The next thing we have to do is we wanna make sure that everything here is level before we keep building. I can see from the level here that we are off. 
So we're gonna have to make an adjustment. For all of you that are watching this in second year, you already know how Mitchell legs work, right? So we have to do the same thing here. You don't level by adjusting the head like you would with a ball mount. You have to adjust with the legs, okay? So that's what we're gonna do right now. We got it, now this is nice and level. We should be good to go. So the next thing we wanna do is take this piece right here and swing that around. There's another bar down at the bottom here and I'm gonna just drop that gently in over here. It's got nowhere else to really go. So we wanna keep this nice and flat for now. This has a receiver that has to take um, this pole right here. So we're gonna have to extend the jib. And in order to do that, we have to start loosening a few pieces. There are two Allen keys that we're gonna use to perform this procedure. There's a larger Allen key that's actually attached to the front plate here. And we will be using that at one point. There's also a smaller Allen key that can be found inside this pouch here. All right, so there's a whole bunch of Allen key receivers along the top here of this jib. And the larger of the two Allen keys are what you're gonna use for this centerpiece. So you wanna make sure this is loosened first. This is gonna give you the ability to slide this back and forth if you need to, okay? So we wanna keep that loose for now. The other Allen key, that's gonna loosen this one right here. So again, the larger Allen key for here, the smaller Allen key for right here. So you can see this chrome piece right here, this is what's gonna extend out, and I start extending the jib. And as I do this, you can see, oh yeah, now this is gonna be super, super easy. So once these two rods have been sort of set into place, you can now recede the jib back until you have your desired height. So you can go higher than this, but there's a frame line right here. And if I go any further, yeah, this is gonna get to be like a weird video. So I'm just gonna say this is a good height right here. And now I have to make sure to adjust my plate here so that this is also level, which it now is. I'm gonna lock this into place. Now this is level. All I have to do now is go down the line and start securing and locking all of my pieces into place. That's all I have to do. So there is the smaller of the two Allen keys. I have now locked this bar into place. Next thing I need is the larger Allen key for right here, and I have to start locking these two pieces up. So I'm gonna do this one next. So now this is locked. This sliding one right here is like an extra support, okay? It just helps to prevent this bar from slipping. So you just press this one against, again, lock it up. How tight is tight? Common sense, okay? Do not over tighten. We don't wanna break anything. So now this is secure. What we need to do now is extend the other side so we can have a handle to put the weights on. So at this point, I'm gonna take all of the weight. Um, this should already be loose and you can slide that out. Awesome and then you can lock that into place. The next thing we need is that big, long uh, metal bar. That's the one, perfect. Would you mind sliding that through the receiver? Again, just like with our first year jib video, if I let go, this is gonna drop down because this is where the majority of the weight is. So we're not gonna bother putting a camera on for today because again, like the first year video, it's just more weight, but the same, the same principle exists here. So what we need is to apply some weight to this side so we can get this sort of level in place. So that big clanky thing is the weight cart. Take it with you on set, make sure you are lifting properly, make sure you're breathing and doing all the right things, lift with your legs. Awesome. So at this point, it's nice and locked into place. We have a couple of um, lock offs that we're now going to apply to this and they just screw into place. Would you mind grabbing those, Regan? At this point, I'm not holding any weight anymore. It's done. All I'm doing is making sure that nothing moves around and hits people. So right now, nothing is locked. Here we go, see? And it just stays in place, right? So that's the point of the jib. It becomes weightless. Now, it does still pan back and forth, just like you can with your first year jib. The only difference here, though, is there are two locks, and you can actually lock your pan so it just stays into place. See? So a couple of things to remember with this particular jib. Number one, you have to level it twice. You have to level here to get started, and then you need to make sure this is also level. Please remember that. Other than that, the other thing to remember, there are numbers written on the side of this jib. 
and the more you extend out, the more you're going to see different weights with a line. That just signifies what the weight capacity is for the jib based on how offset you are from the center. So as you extend further out, you will see that number getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And all that means is that the complete payload, which is the total weight of your camera package with the tripod head, has to be lower than whatever that number is. Otherwise, you're exceeding the payload and it won't hold, okay? You're compromising the safety of the jib. Again, this is only for the Black Magic cameras, the lighter cameras, and we do have two other optional accessories with this. You also have the option to get our new Pro Aim remote head. How awesome is that? So you can actually control the camera independently of the jib which is awesome, so independent panning and tilting that is not associated to any of this, which is really neat. We also have a set of wheels that this jib can attach to as well, and that's gonna be exclusive to our film studio. So if you're gonna be shooting on location in our film studio, by all means, feel free to also rent out the wheels, and that way you can get that dolly jib shot that I know every film student wants. So there's another lock off that just goes into place right here. And that, again, is just an extra safety feature, just holds everything into place. One last thing is, let's say you've balanced everything, but you can't exactly get the weight where you need it to be. And so there's a bit of a, a, bit of a shift. You can loosen these two and then move the entire unit back and forth. You can also do the same thing with the handle. You can just move the handle in, and the more you move that in, the more you're centering your weight, and that will also help get your balance. The only thing is if you shift the bar, remember to set it back exactly the way it was before when you're packing up, otherwise it won't fit, okay? It won't fit back in the bag, and that will be tragic. So that's it. We're done, right? We've uh, played around, we've talked about the jib, we know some of the things and techniques and all that other good stuff. Now it's the boring part, we gotta pack it up. We have to take just as much time and care in packing it up as we did building it. It has to be in the same pristine condition for the next person, right? Just like it was when you rented it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the weights off and I'm gonna hold this into place. So the weights have been packed up, the two lock offs are put back in the Ziploc bag. Now the handle's been taken out as well and that's gonna go back into that side pouch, uh, the Velcro pouch inside the uh, jib bag. Next, we can receive the holder. Now, what we have to do is detach this part. So the first thing I'm gonna do is loosen these two rods. I'm now gonna loosen the lock off, and we can put that away. So we have our Allen key. Again, the small one here will loosen the front. I'm gonna hold on to this for a moment because I'm gonna need it in about 30 seconds. The larger of the two Allen keys, okay. that's tight. That's where I want it. I want this to be tight. So that's great. I'm now gonna loosen the wheel and now I'm gonna start pulling this back. Perfect. So now this is in place. I'm now gonna lock this back up just so it doesn't slide. So now this collapses and flips over, just like that. This bar comes up. Now, now I'm gonna take all of this weight. I'm gonna ask Regan if you wouldn't mind loosening the lock off on the bottom. Now, you know how this goes. You know how this packs up. I'm not gonna go over this with you now, but the last thing I wanna show you is how this goes back into the bag, okay? Because it's very specific the way that it fits in. So in this pouch, you're gonna put the Ziploc bag. Inside of that should be the Allen key and the two lock offs, and then of course the big bar, okay? Now, when you take a look at this bag, it has a shape to it. It gets higher on this side as opposed to here, okay? When you take a look at the collapsed jib, you'll see it shares a very similar size, okay? So you have to make sure this larger side over here matches with this ridge right here. And that way everything's gonna sit nice when we collapse the bag. And if you've packed it the right way, everything should fit beautifully, okay? If it doesn't, I know this is gonna sound lame, pull it back out and repack it, okay? Somewhere along, you have made a misstep. Maybe you gotta reset the bar a little bit. Maybe you just missed one little lock-off. If a lock-off is still attached, it won't close, you know what I mean? 
So you gotta stop, you gotta take it back out and redo it again. Thank you so much, that's it, that's the Jib video, okay? If you need any questions, you need any help, you can talk to me, you can talk to our amazing student employees in the cage, whatever you need. Uh, once again, thank you for tuning in, good luck to you, good luck on your films, and uh, that's it from Conflicts. Thank you. What do you say, Regan? Yeah. <laughs>